and we're live. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. How are we? Just wait for a couple of minutes just for everybody to get in here. Anybody there? Is anybody there? Say hi. Arun, how are you, mate? You all right? <laughs> Good afternoon. Panad's in from Ohio. Richard's here. Dave's here. Steve's here. <laughs> so we've got a bit, of a bit of a live video going on. Mike's here. Every, oh, everybody's piling in now. Yeah, so the old girl's been running a bit rough just recently. So uh, mill light's been flashing on and that. Hi Mike, and uh, I had a quick look at it the other day, um, quick blimp with the old co-reader, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Javia, so we've got, we've got a ruck of EGR faults and that, vivid, <laughs> hi mate, <laughs> how sunny Poland, <laughs> it's nicer than here, can't believe this, this time last week I had my shorts on, and now I've got all my bloody winter clothes back on again. Yeah, so the old girl. She's, uh, mill light's been flashing on, running a bit rough, uh, gas mileage has gone down, so we uh, thought we'd have a, we thought we'd have a, thought we'd have a look at it, and see what's going on, just finish me brew. That's it, that's the brew done and dusted. Yeah, so what we've got here, I'll turn it round so you can see. Oh. Still can't see me. I'll do turn my camera around. There we go. Summer was last week. You're right. Wednesday and Thursday last week. I always do that. Just turn the camera around. Right. So what we've got? We've got a 2007 Citroen Relay. Hey up, Keith. How are we? 2007 Citroen Relay. The 2.2 Ford Puma engine in it. And we've got a few faults with it. Afternoon, Simon. We've got a few faults with it, so we're going to have a quick, we're going to have a quick blimp at it. We've got a few tools connect that we can have a look at. Afternoon, Steve. So we've got, I've got my Veris plugged in at the minute. So I've got my snap-on breakout box. We've got the top done, uh, RT Diag 100 to have a look at. We've got this little bad boy. You can see it. The launch C reader CRP one two three. We'll have a look at that in a bit. This is going up for. This was um, donated by Top Don. Uh, not Top Don. Um, King Bolland. Um, so we're going to have a look at that as well. That's going to be a giveaway. That is at some point. I did a video on it. <sighs> Did a video on the uh, on the CRP, uploaded it, and it corrupted on the upload, so I've got to do it again. So yeah, at the minute I've got the Veris plugged in into DLC, and we'll scan it and have a look for fault codes. Vehicle's got eighty-four thousand mile on it. She's a workhorse. She is. She's a workhorse. So we'll go into the back at van. Because that's where all the magic happens. Sit back at man. It's a while since we've been in here, isn't it? So as it's been a while since we've been in here. Let's get you set up. Sorry for all the shaky camera work. Snooze that. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. Alright, so we've got the Veris connected via Bluetooth. Change the vehicle, so we're going to scan it. Citroen D. 
it's a bit hard doing this through the through view five, so you'll have to forgive me if I miss any comments or anything like that. Uh, Danny, is it worth the money? Um, for me, yes. For most people, most mortal people, I would say no. Um, no, it's it's best part of five hundred quid, mate. It's not worth the money. It's not. So we've got a two thousand and seven Citroen Relay three, four HU. Okay. I've already done a full code scan on it, but we'll do it again. Hmm. Sure track. Oh, there we go. Sure track's told us already. EGR Val, video over. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Not really. Let's get rid of sure track. We don't want to play part starts because it's my my budget. Yeah, I can uh, I can link it to the big screen if I want. But uh, to be honest, the idea with the Veris is that it's hand, it, you know it's um, portable. So what have we got? PO four oh five, PO four oh three, PO four oh four. PO 520, PO 600, got all the codes. But what we're going to concentrate on are the PO 40s. Have a look at the EGRs. So 405, 403, 404. Really good fault descriptions. So we'll come back out of there. Engine management. Let's have a look at a bit of live data. Live data. Air circuit information. Just look at baseline stuff with key on. See what's happening. Right, you see how slow the data rate is here, the sample rate, really, really slow. So, custom list, deselect all. We're going to look at measured airflow, airflow reference, EGR control. EGR status. So this is just key on. So it's showing 32 kilograms per hour airflow reference and zero key on. So I'll just go and start the vehicle. That's the vehicle running. Idle, we've got about 26 to 28 kilograms per hour. EGR at 25%. And yet it's not showing as active. Right, so let's have a look at what the system actually entails. Must be a bit of a delay on the stream. Can everybody hear me okay?
Loving the potato vision. <laughs> right, brilliant audio is good. Awesome. Wow, it's heck of a delay there. Right, so we're using the Hella HGS system here. Is the video good? video not good no oh, sorry about that the, the, the video should be okay all right okay right so we're using the LHS system I've already taken pulled up the wiring diagram. So what we want to look at is the EGR valve. So it highlights it for us. Right, so what we're what we're looking at here, we've got um five wire five wire EGR, potato is back. Right, okay. We might have to scrap this then. We might have to scrap this. Right, okay, so we've got basically we've got a five wire EGR. Um and what we're looking at we we can we can see roughly what we what we um what we need to be looking at. We're gonna to expect to see two control wires, um a signal wire, a five volt reference and a ground. So these two wires here, so pin four and pin two, one of them's going off to the fuel temp sensor. And one of them's going off to the the IAT, right? So both these are thermistors. So we're wondering is is, is what what's going to be shared? Yeah. So one of them's going to be a five volt, and one of them's going to be a ground. I would have thought. We're going to have a signal line, and we're going to have two control wires. Looking at the, we un unhighlight it. Looking at it, we can see here. It's coming down from another sensor, coming in through the top. So I would say this would be my five volt. One and five, they're gonna be my control wires, I would have thought. One of them will be PWM and one should be a ground. And that's what Oh, it is dropping out. Oh dear. Yeah. Whether it's um, electric or electric, electro pneumatic, so vacuum operated, it gives us wiring diagrams and it also gives us component test values. It gives us a pin out of the ECU and what we should be expecting to see on each pin. Now luckily for you guys, I've already written this down. So, let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. So we, at the minute we can just do the test key on. So what we've got here, 
I've already written down what we've what we've got on the on the different wires. So white lilac control, green white ground, green lilac VREF, yellow blue control wire, and grey blue the position sensor. There's my pins for the math as well. And you can see what I've done is I've, I've written it how, how somebody would tip, typically write it on a wiring diagram and you can see it's very very difficult to follow whereas the way I've done it here I've actually gone for the pins on the connector on the actual component so one two four five and six the wire colors the ECU terminal and then what I'm expecting to see on it. So I've already got I've already got an idea of what I'm looking for before I even start getting under the bonnet. And we'll just show you where the EGR lives. Like I said, it's the it's the, the 2.2 Ford engine. fuel rail and the EGR lives down there you can just see the top of it where my back probe, where that green probe is that's the EGR there I'll show you give you a good look at it so this is me down here you can see I'm already back probed into two wires One's the control wire and one's the position sensor. Engine ECU is located over there. Battery jump point. Earth point. So let's have a look at what we've actually got at the uh, at the EGR valve. Just go and get me Varus. Right, so we've got the Varus. Starts to rain, probably. Oh, is it all? It's better out the van, is it, mate? Awesome. Get the leads up. Let's get you, get you a bit closer. What was that? I missed that then. Nice video. Right, so we hit the home button, scope multimeter, pulse DC. Is that okay, or is there, there's quite a lot of glare there, isn't there? See if we can get it so there's not as much glare. There we go, there's not as much glare there now. No, we don't really need peak detect on. Connect my wires up now. Right, and we 
we've got zero volts and zero volts. Well, let's start her up and see what we've got. Right. You see on the green on the green channel we've got EGR control and on the yellow channel that should be EGR position. It's not actually doing anything. So the problem is So have we got Oh gosh, radio now. Right, so what we need to know now is have we got a problem? We've got no EGR position, so have we got a connectivity problem? Have we got an EGR problem? Or have we got a wiring issue? Well, that's what we need to look at first. We can see we're getting e EGR control, but we're not getting anything at all from the position sensor. So, first of all, what we need to do is just check that the back probe's in properly. And it is. And there's nothing at all there. So, let's unplug it and see, what, see if we get any change on that wire on the position sensor wire. Because without without a valid without a valid reading from that, it's not going to know where, what position the EGR is in. So I'm just going to unplug it to see if we've got a bias voltage. Which is always easier said than done. So that's the EGR unplugged. And we've still got no change at all in the position sensor. That's on pin six grey blue wire we've got nothing at all there so nothing at all on pin six on the grey blue wire I'll show you with camera so we're back probed back probed into the come on focus focus back probed into the grey grey blue nothing at all so next step now is we need to see what's coming out the ECU have we got a broken wire or have we got a faulty Multi position sensor in the EGR. So let's get you back there. Right, all I'm going to do now is just run down the run down the other wires to make sure that I've got five volt reference. Bit hard doing this live. So one, two, three wires. So that's pin two. I forgot on pin two. Nothing. Ok, 
pin four. We've got five volts or 4.99 volts. Can you see that? Let me zoom in a bit more. Then we've also got 4.99. We have nothing on pin two. Pin six, and we've got nothing on pin six. So we've got no bias, no bias voltage on the signal line. We've got a ground, a good ground on the other wire. But what you can see there is, if you look at it now, we've got 0, 0.00 volts. If I disconnect it. You see how the voltage is changing? Yeah, so that tells me I've got a good connection. You see how the, the line's going up and down? Yeah, and when I put it back in. Oh, things fell out. <coughs> so when I put it back in now it's gone to zero 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 and it's not fluctuating we're looking on the green channel channel 2 so that tells me I'm actually connected okay and the wire is actually going back to somewhere so I've got no no bias voltage on that line whatsoever so what we can do now we can actually check and see what's going on at the ECU Obsessed, how are we, mate? <laughs> We're not really prepped for this, to be honest, but we'll see how we go. So I'll just turn the turn the key off. Right, and it was position sensor was grey blue IF one uh, F three and that was on the grey connector. Yeah it was it was on the on the grey connector. So let's find out which one's the grey connector. Black one. That's the brown one, so it's going to be the last one. Grey connector. So one F three. Clips off. Can you all see that okay? Yeah. It clips off without breaking them because it's my van. So that's that off. We're looking for grey blue one F pin one F three. So that would be Information wrong. A, B, C, D, E, F. There it is. That little fella there, that grey blue there. Do, 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 
Joys of being a Diag Tech. See so we can open it up a little bit. We'll take up a bit, give me a bit of room on the cables. That's it. There we go. We're at it now. So grey blue, back probed in, 1F3. There we go, she's in. Can you see that? So you can see we're in row three. There we go, in the back of that grey wire. Come on, focus. There we go. She's in. So we'll plonk her back in. Brown connector back in. yellow channel on that T-pin like so move the Varus over so you can see the Varus yeah there's loads of loads of possibilities for broken wires on these that for glare what I'm going to do now just turn it on did the wire jump up no it didn't so we've got nothing at all no bias voltage on that or anything. Plug it back in, see what happens. Right, so that's the EGI plugged back in. Still no change on that yellow channel. Start the engine. You can see it's moving a tiny little bit. intermittent pulse. Let's see what happens if I rev it up. Nothing at all. 
Oh, what is this noise? Alright, so now my final step really now is to load test that wire just to make sure that wire is okay between the EGR and the ECU. We can do that very, very easily. Do that very, very easily now. So all we need to do is disconnect the ECU again. ECU disconnected. Disconnect the EGR. That's the EGR disconnected. And what I can do, I can actually because I can just use my Verus lead now. So well, that's that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Get me very lead. Stick that into my position sensor wire, which was pin six. Do that one there. ground lead which is there so I'm giving it a path to ground and then all I want to do now is just touch that with a test light So what I've got here now, I've got my normal, my normal snap-on test lamp, 100 milliamps. We're only looking at a, um, a signal line, so we don't need to, uh, we don't need to put any massive amounts of current down it. But it's my normal snap-on test light with a four mil banana in the end of it and a crocodile clip. I'm going to go straight to battery positive. Test my test light. You can see my test light lights up. When I get when I give it a good ground, and all I'm gonna do now is touch that T pin there. And if the wire's intact, that test light should light up. Can you see it lighting up? And just to just to validate the test, what we'll do is disconnect the disconnect the ground here. So I've no longer got I've no longer got connectivity to that. We've just touched that. No path to ground. So that proves me wire's okay, it's not shorted to ground and it's capable of carrying a hundred milliamps. So I know my wire's okay. Um the connection at the ECU is okay. So this wants an EGR valve because it's not reporting position. It really is that easy. But I'll tell you what else we're going to do while we're here. We're just going to have a quick look at another option for you guys. Just to give you a bit of an idea of another, another tool you can use. So let's turn you back round. And keep you a bit nearer the door actually. Let me know if the video goes. Right, so what we've got here, we've got James Dillon's Diagnostic Assistance software. I've put the, I've fitted the dongle into the laptop. Just minimise that. Start the Diagnostic Assistance. It 
the search bar at the top. You remember the the fault code was PO405, wasn't it? So there you go, PO405. Search. EGR position sensor one occurrence display. Let's have a look at it. So it tells us EGR position sensor. How it works, description operation, potentiometer reports on the physical position of the EGR. The signal increases as, as the valve moves from a closed to open position. The engine management ECU uses the sensor signal as a feedback signal to verify that the value has physically responded to the command signal it reads. That should read valve. So uses the sensor signal as a feedback to verify that the valve has physically responded to the command signal it received. Well we know ours didn't. Um, I do know the command's okay, we saw that, we saw the command signal at PWM. So then it tells us test conditions, key on engine running or cranking, Done using a multimeter, scan tool, live data, or a scope. Best test location ECM multi plug. And then notice how it says testing here does not account for faults which may be present between the sensor and the ECM. In other words, a wiring fault, but we've already proved that my signal wire is intact. Okay. So it shows us a six pin multi plug. Ours was a six pin plug, but only five wires populated. Five volt supply, which we know we have, we've tested that. Signal output we had and a ground. We had a good we had a good ground because it we had zero volts on it. PO PO four oh five EGR valve position sensor eight low input, which exactly corresponds with what we had. And if we wanted to then, we can actually launch the PicoScope software. But it'll tell us how to set up a multimeter, how to set up a scan tool, and our expected results. And then for unexpected test results, open or short circuit in the component wiring, no connection in the multi-plug or a poor connection, stuck or sticking EGR, failed sensor or ECM fault. Well just based on those few tests they've done bear in mind the way up you got the beard then you got a close-up of the gray beard yeah so bear, bear in mind um the age of the vehicle it's 12 years old um the environment it lives in the wiring's okay the ecu seemed okay um and we've got multiple other fault codes, PO403, PO404 for the EGR not working. I would say almost certainly that I need an EGR valve on that, which this vehicle's not going to get. So yeah, so any questions? Any questions at all while I'm here? Punch. The King Bowen sent me. We'll have a quick look at that. <laughs> Dan, All, uh, uh, always late mate yeah it was, it was uh, James Dillon's diagnostic assistance there is another video on that on, on my channel so all I'm going to do now I'm going to unplug the, the Veris and I'm just going to plug this little launch in just to see whether we, could, whether we can actually use that or not uh, let me just plug my ECU back in System ID. Okay. Let's read DTCs. EGR position signal, permanent fault. EGR valve control, permanent fault. Well, obviously, you'll get control faults if it doesn't know the valve's moving. Requested position not achievable. 
oil pressure switch that's a video for another day K line that's a video for another day temporary cam fault that's probably because we've had it unplugged glow plug fault uh, factory fit An absence of vehicle speed information transmitted by the ABS ECU temporary fault okay let's just have a look at what live data it gives us we want to have a look at air really All right, so it gives us engine cam crank measured airflow airflow reference value Take air temp, EGR control, engine stopped. So let's let's start the engine and see what happens. Well, it didn't drop out, so that's a good thing. As you can see, the EGR is actually being controlled. see there EGR electric status inactive in other words it's not moving measured airflow 27 29 Oh, it's handy little tool that looking at that. Let's just have a look at fuel circuit while we're in here. Rail pressure. Injector flow. There we go, so look at that fuel pressure sensor voltage, 1.4 at idle, and look at me, um, me fuel control valve, 43%, 44% at idle. Yeah, Gary, definitely be looking at the EGR, mate. So let's just have a look at this voltage without the engine running. All right, it's not giving it us without the engine running. See if it gives us that voltage with the with just with key on. No, it won't give us that information key on. That's a shame.
don't think it shit itself. What's in the ABS? Let's have a look. There we go. Incorrect value received from the warning lamp. The ABS warning lamp does work. So we've got wheel speeds and supply voltage. That's a little CRP123. There we go, the live data's back again now. Handy little tool that. Right, so there we go. Quick little look there on how to how to diagnose an EGR fault. Uh, not the best video in the world. But uh, it give you give you an idea of uh, you know how to load your signal wires and stuff like that. Um, bit of a procedure how to how to look at stuff. So if you remember, right off we started off with a, um, a code read, full vehicle code read. Then we had a look at the the wiring diagram just to see what we were looking at. Identified the pins and that what we'd expect to see, um, and then verified it with the scope. So this vehicle needs an EGR valve, it won't be getting one. So guys, I might do another live video later, we'll just wait and see, see what the see what the weather does. The sky, if you look behind me, is a bit grey and foreboding. So we may or may not do another live video later, something a little bit different. Thanks for watching.